In this episode of American Greed, for years, an epidemic of teenage nicotine addiction sweeps the country. Vaping, now the it thing for teens. The FDA today calling it a dangerous epidemic. Leaving thousands of kids now fighting to get clean. I'm 10 hours in. It's hard. And the culprit blamed for this ongoing public health crisis, an e-cigarette called Juul. With nearly 75% market share, e-cigarette maker Juul has become enemy number one. It's not like millions of kids using e-cigarettes generally. Like, they're all using Juul. Meet the minds behind the life-altering invention, James Monchies and Adam Bowen, two Silicon Valley entrepreneurs who grow their business faster than Facebook. Hitting a value of $38 billion in just four years by selling one of the most addictive drugs on the legal market. If you talk to some adults, they'll say, it was easier for me to get off of cocaine or heroin than to get off of my cigarettes. Bowen and Monsies insist they are good guys working to save the lives of smokers. I think the real opportunity here is to improve the lives of a billion people worldwide. But critics say they target kids and create a new generation of addicts. You're nothing but a marketer of a poison. And while they are at it, they get fabulously rich. And as a result, they've made combined billions of dollars. And it's just not right. It is a drive for profits that earns the makers of Jewel a place on American greed. As we work to answer the question, what matters more to Bowen and Monsies? The mission or the money? In 2018, a public health crisis is racing through high schools across the country. And in North Carolina, the state's attorney general, Josh Stein, hears alarming stories about children in his state who are vaping. They got addicted, their grades plummeted, they got kicked off sports teams, they had to switch schools. They had to seek medical counseling or treatment for their addiction. He decides to investigate. I came back to the office and I said to my team, what is going on here? We have to look into what's happening. And that investigation, he says, leads to a multi-billion dollar enterprise that leaves families across the country in crisis. In 2005, in Silicon Valley, where dreams to change the world come true, the seeds of an ambitious plan to save the lives of one billion people take hold. It comes from two students at Stanford University's product design program, James Monsies and Adam Bowen. They are smart, creative, and have much in common. I ended up with a degree in physics and a minor in studio art. I double majored in physics and studio art. And they also share two more interests that will chart their futures. One is a common goal to do good in the world, and the other, an addiction to cigarettes. In a series of interviews with CNBC over two years, they share their story. Both of us were conflicted smokers. We are both exercise a lot, eat well, but uh, still smoking. Still smoking even though they know it is the largest preventable cause of death in the world. According to the CDC, more than 400,000 people in the United States die from smoking every year. They realize that these burning sticks hanging from their mouth are idiotic. Lauren Etter is an investigative journalist who writes a book about Monsies and Bowen. They started wondering, why hasn't anybody innovated the cigarette? Suddenly, in their deadly habit, Bowen and Monsi see a phenomenal opportunity to do good, to create a product that replaces cigarettes. It's hard to imagine an area um, that can be more powerful to public health in particular than to eliminate cigarettes from the face of the earth. Powerful and potentially very lucrative. And so there are two goals here. 
So not only do they have their public health mission, like this is a product that can save lives, but wow, there are one billion smokers in the world. And if we can grab a tiny piece of that market, we will be rich. And in Silicon Valley, getting rich is the name of the game. And Bowen and Monsies head out to search for investors. As they're trying to raise more money, they're really leaning into their mission because this is what gives a sheen of morality to the company, essentially, by telling investors, no, we're not a tobacco company. We're taking on big tobacco. We're disrupting big tobacco. The pitch works. And with a handful of Silicon Valley investors providing $500,000 in seed money, they get to work on their invention. Right from the start, they operate on a single principle. It is the burning of the cigarette that kills, not the nicotine. If they can eliminate the combustion, they believe they can eliminate the danger. We thought, well, you know, that's, that's easy for us as product, product designers. Of course, it turned out to be not so easy. It took thousands of prototypes. Finally, in 2010, they have a marketable product a nicotine vaporizer that heats tobacco rather than burns it. They call it plume. When you inhale, you get this vapor, but it's not smoke, it's just vapor. So you get the nicotine, you get the flavor, but you don't actually burn the tobacco. Marketing professional Kurt Sonderegger, now the owner of his own vaping business, is hired to sell plume to vape shops, but it's a tough sell. It did have a lot of pain points. To start it, you had to push this little button, and if your finger was in the wrong spot, you could actually get a little shock. <laughs> and there is also an even bigger problem. The big thing that it wasn't was satisfying. There was no added nicotine. If you were a smoker, as I was at the time, you could plume for an hour and still want to go outside and have a cigarette. And so Bowen and Monsies search for an answer, pouring through tobacco industry records available online, and they discover a key to their success, a recipe for making nicotine feel less harsh on the throat. They found that if you brought the, the pH down to more neutral, even a little bit acidic pH, the smoke went down way easier. People could inhale more of it. Stacy Keach here, feeling greedy for more videos like this one? Then be sure to like and subscribe right here on CNBC Prime.